Okay, so um, as promised, this is just a really quick video that gives you a few tips to how to answer um, M2, D1 and D2 from Martin. Um, I have talked through these, through these a little bit with you, so hopefully some of this will be me repeating myself, um, some of it might be new. But what I just want to make sure is you have done P1 to P4 and M1 before you even start to look at M2, D1, D2. Okay. So M2, as you can see there, is looking at identify and explain the limitations of the marketing research methods used by Highbury College. Then what effect can this have on the marketing plans? So, this question itself has three strands to it. First of all, you need to talk about the main limitations of all marketing research. And as you can see there, that's time and money. So you know the characteristics of different types of research. You've done primary, you've looked at secondary, you've looked at quantitative, you've looked at qualitative. So you're going to know which ones cost more than the other. You're going to know which ones take more time than the other. But what's important is you talk about picking the right type of research for the right project and then the limitations of that research. So you've completed P3 talking about market research at Highbury. What do you think of that research? What are the problems with it? So is it detailed enough? Is it accurate enough? Is it valid enough? In the next slide, we're going to look at what those key words are that make good information or make excellent information. But one of the main limitations of market research is how is it used. So when the research is done, what decision is made from it? So what you've got here is just a little cycle that goes through maybe a plan that a business might do when they're using their research. So what do they need to find out? How are they going to find this out? What options are available to them? Which options do they choose and why? What do they do with that? What do they do with the decision? And then did the decision work? So if they decide to pick a particular type of research, is that the best type of research? So you know what Highbury do. We've talked about the three different methods that they use. You need to think about, do they work? Or do you think they work? And what are the limitations of those pieces of research? And when you're doing that, you're going to be looking at some of these key words. So if we start, if we start over here, when we're looking at sample size, scope, when we're looking at sample size, scope, and range, what we're talking about is the um, information that's been um, found out, how much has been found out, from who. So how many people have we asked? Um, what demographic have we asked? So if we just asked business students, could the college make a decision cross college? If we just asked part-time students, could the college make a decision cross college? How many students are being asked? So if we ask 20 students from different departments, can the college make a decision cross college? The research that I've completed, is that good enough? So the fact that I've looked at local colleges, is that enough? to enable me to make decisions about the course structure. The fact that I may have gone to other colleges and looked at what they do locally, is that enough for me to make decisions about the whole course structure? And that's what you're going to be thinking about. And that's why this criteria links into D2. So when you're looking at the limitations of research, you're thinking about what makes good research. So if it's not valid, that's a limitation. If it's not detailed, relevant, accessible, accurate, reliable, then that's a limitation. So let's just look at some of these words quickly. Uh, reliability. So if we did the study again, or if we did the research again, would the same results come up? And if they do, you could argue that, well, that's more reliable. If we're looking at the word validity, so how many people say the same thing? If you're researching online and you find out a fact, do you take that fact as gospel? You might sometimes, but... More often than not, especially when you progress to a higher level, you're going to try and find other sources that say the same thing so that you're more confident about the decision you're making. Is it relevant? So is it relevant to the research? Is it relevant to the decision that needs to be made? If we're making a decision about course structure or units, are we going to ask questions about safeguarding or health and safety? Well, probably not for that particular example. Is it accessible? So can we access it? If there's loads and loads of detailed quantitative research completed, that's all well and good. But can I do anything with that research? Can I download it? Can I use it? And if not, again, that's a limitation. So 
So you can see this moves quite naturally onto D2. Because in D2, <coughs> you need to identify and justify recommendations for improving the validity of the market research gathered by Highbury College. So here you can see it says to do this, you'll need to explain what makes valid research. Now you should have done quite a lot of that as part of the M2 criteria. So it should be a natural progression for you to move on to and make recommendations. Thinking about range, scope, sample size, accessibility, validity, reliability, relevance, accessibility, all those things that you've identified, maybe as part of M2, can filter into your recommendation for improving the validity of the research at Highbury. Because this is a distinction criteria, you're going to need to reference. So that means you're going to need to go online, you're going to need to find out, well, what do other people say about improving the validity of market research? What do businesses or other businesses do that you think makes very valid research? So you're going to have to spend a little bit of time reading around this subject. It's not a massive distinction criteria. I think really what you're looking at here is maybe just a page and a half. So half a page for each recommendation. What you must make sure, though, is the recommendation is justified and valid for Highbury College. It can't just be ask more people. Because, well, anyone can say that, can't they? There's no logic behind that. There's no uh, justification. There's no real um, theory. So you need to make sure that your ideas are backed up with justifications and evidence. Really, really, really important, that. Um, this is just, um, just an example, really. Uh, you can use this one to an extent as long as you do back it up. So this is focusing on what I do, my secondary research. So I identify that, yeah, okay, I do secondary research. As I alluded to earlier, I look at local colleges, I find out what they do, I look at, uh, I talk to students from those colleges, and that enables me to find out well, what do other colleges do in terms of their course structure. Well, the issue there is, uh, well, yeah, I'm finding out more about what Portsmouth colleges do, but there may, may be some amazing colleges nationwide that I haven't investigated. So your recommendation to me is, well, do that. Find these top colleges nationwide. Find out what they do. Possibly establish links with these colleges, both national and international. So maybe I would visit the college, or at least I would search online to find out what they do, what makes them great. We are top five, first, second or third in the, in the UK. Why aren't we number one? Business department, I don't know where we are in the UK. Why aren't we number one? Maybe I should find out that. Find out who is number one, and then find out what we can do to bridge that gap. However, obviously that's going to take me time, it's going to cost me money, especially if I'm going to, going to visit those colleges. But the impact of that, well, my decisions would um, be a little bit more justified, would be a little more valid. Because I know that college is doing that, then it's not necessarily definitely going to work, but I've got more confidence that it will work. So maybe the impact of the course would be more varied, and you guys would uh, have a better experience, greater satisfaction when it comes down to it. Increase student numbers. And that is, and always will be, our goal and the college goal. So you can see that the recommendation follows a path. It talks about the issue, talks about the solution, and then it talks about the impact, and actually links the impact back to the goals, the objectives of the business. Now this would need to be backed up with some sort of research. So what I'm doing here is increasing the scope. So you would need to find some references, some articles that talk about the importance of increasing the scope of research. Okay, moving on. Um, D1, now this is going on to back to what you did for P1 and M1. You need to focus on one of your organisations. Now it's really, really important that you pick the organisation that you think has done the most, or is the most creative or different, or you can find the most information for. Don't pick the boring one, because it's going to make this really, really hard, if not impossible. So what you need to do is you need to evaluate the effectiveness of the techniques used. So what that means is it's not just saying, okay, they've done this, compared to this, it may have worked or may not have worked. I need to know, did it work? What actually happened? So the example I've got on the right-hand side there, remember it's branding overall, ANSOFT and CRM. So this is just a really quick uh, example of how maybe you could apply this. So what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on the ANSOFT matrix. Um, I'm going to talk about, um, now I know this isn't true because Tesco's weren't successful internationally, but this is just an example. So let's pretend that Tesco's um, used their Ansoft matrix and they wanted to, to develop their market further, which they did. They decided to uh, create and move their brand to America. 
They rebranded it, recolored it, but they moved their brand to America. That's market development. So then I would try and find out online, well, were they successful? So let's, for this example, suppose they were. I would look at uh, their turnover. I would look at their market share online, which all the statistics are online. I would then um, look at maybe why they were successful. What was it about their brand that made them successful? And I'd make sure that was all evidenced. So what I'm doing there is I'm not going through the whole Ansoft matrix. That's not what I'm looking for. Don't do every single box or every single example. You're picking a real example that really works and you're delving quite deep into that. You're researching that particular example. And what you're going to need to do is go through that, maybe a couple of examples for branding, one for Ansoft and one for CRM. So what we're looking at here possibly is probably about two pages, maybe a little bit more, but it's the depth of research that's going to get you this criteria, not the quantity. But I'm just saying two pages to give you a rough idea. Okay, so I've gone through M2, D1, D2. There's an upload on the VLE, put all this on. Obviously all your resources on the VLE. Please do uploads and we'll catch up when I get back.